Hi, Visha. How are you doing? I'm very well, Johnson. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Thank you so much for joining me on Truth, Wisdom, and Freedom. And um, thank you for those of you who are tuning in. Hi, Venny. How are you? And um, yeah, so today I have here Visha Nelson, who is a guest. She is someone that I've known from for a few years now. And we met in Singapore. I don't really even know what to call you. You're you're like a like a colleague, a friend, a client. I don't even know. <laughs> you're so many things to me. Um, but I I love I'm speaking with Visha because she is she's one of those people that's really connected to what's happening in her inner world and how that plays out in her life and and she's very much in contact with her her feelings her emotions and self-development and all of these spiritual practices and yet she's also very grounded in her business she is the founder and designer of the cinnamon room which is a boutique home decor company based in singapore and they have actually won numerous global awards and they're featured in like Condé Nast and various other publications. So you to me are someone who embodies um, what it means to be, you know, a conscious leader because you you have a business right? and you're also very much into consciousness and self-development and personal growth. Um, and, and you can see that in the passion of what it is that you do in helping people with their home and their spaces. So today we're talking about that, about physical sanctuary and inner sanctuary. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and how you help people? Um, so I would say that uh, I run a business purely out of passion for beautiful spaces. Um, but it's not just as simple as just the aesthetics. It's really got to do with how a place, a space makes you feel. Um, that level of well-being when you're in that space. So the colors that you choose, the designs, the angles, the curves, um, how all of these are pulled together to create a space where it doesn't just look good, but it makes you feel good. And that's what I always say to my clients, you know, we're here to help you transform your spaces to make your outer world look great, your external environment. And with that, your it definitely affects your inner well-being of how you're feeling in that space. So for me, that's really, really important. Yeah. Maybe tell us a little bit about how that works for you from your own experience, the how, how you've seen in your life and also in clients' lives of how when you affect change in the external environment, in their home, especially nowadays, everyone's working from home. So now home is yeah. the workspace and, and, and there's this confusion yeah. between the both and how that's affected um, people's peace of mind. Um, absolutely, I think when we were all leaving home to go to an office space or to an, an environment elsewhere, there was this clear demarcation of home and your workspace and now that the two has merged I think it's been really interesting to see how people have come to terms with that and the first thing that I have said to a lot of my clients is you're looking around you're feeling that it isn't quite right to work in that space the main reason is, is because it's really very cluttered you need to remove clear space it's so very similar to how I feel about my own personal well-being that if you are really consumed with a whole load of emotions um, and if you have a space which is very, very cluttered, uh, you can't think straight. So clear out the clutter, create a new space, have a bit of clarity of what you want for that space and then it will just be, it will come together very easily. Yeah. It's not just about being creative it's how to before you can be creative clear the space yeah inwards and outwards for sure and it's um interesting because this parallels a lot to uh, in dream psychology and psychology whenever we're talking about dreams and we look at the house that comes in our dreams as a symbol the house is very much a representation of our path and what's happening 
and, and all of the different rooms in the house, the lights that turn on, some rooms are dark, there's the basement, how, what's happening in the rooms, what kind of relationships, what kind of people. And so the, the house itself is very symbolic when we talk in terms of dreams and analyzing you yeah. know, what kind of emotional states we're moving in and out of. And we need to take care of this in the actual you know, home. And so can you talk a little bit about stress and about um, grounding and anchoring into a, a place where one feels they're aligned um, through the kind of color choices that you use. Because I know color plays a, a very big part in how it is you set up the space as well as the angles. And we know that everything is vibration. The chakras are vibrating yeah. all at certain colors. And so maybe you have some examples or stories of people's homes and how you've seen their personalities or the way that they deal with their emotions have changed because of how you've shifted their spaces. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I always say when I'm asked for, you know, home decor tips. What is, I never go by trends. Trends come and go. You have to go with something where it reflects your personality. So we talk about colors and you know from your experience with me that my showroom space, the cinnamon room is a really burst of color. And if you come to my home and the way I dress, I am a person that loves color, but that isn't the case for everybody. Some people really need a more soothing color palette, more neutral tones to help them feel grounded. So the first thing I always say to clients is really look at what your personality is and what you're looking to achieve with this space. The feeling that you're hoping to invoke with it that is reflection of who you are. Um, it's not walking, stepping into something that's been designed by a designer where you know that's the Pantone color of the year and saying okay that's going to be me I can tell you there's several Pantone colors of the year that I would not touch um, ever and would ever have in a design scheme but more importantly than color it's the placement of your pieces around you the furniture the positioning of the soft furnishings and that I always say is achieved by balance and symmetry and how when you um, design a space with balance and symmetry in mind, that actually makes it more appealing to the eye when you're looking at it. Um, we talked about lighting. Lighting is really, really important. I think too often people think by just, you know, lighting is an afterthought, but actually when I'm designing a space, it's almost one of the first things that I think of, of how do you soften the tone and the ambience of the space? Um, and that's achieved by soft lighting, whether it's candle lights, whether it's a table lamp, a floor lamp, it's creating a mood, a feeling, um, especially important now where we can't escape to that spa, we can't escape to that luxury hotel. Um, how do you create that feeling within your home space to make you feel comfortable? And also, what can you do from day to the evening so that you can have those clear boundaries between your daytime life and your evening life? Now, how we do one thing is how we do everything. Right. But it's still very, I, I personally think, from my own personal experience, of how to have a few boundaries where you can step out of your working from home environment yeah. to your your you know relaxation environment yeah and i love what you're saying about finding balance through symmetry because this is very much how we as leaders of our communities whether you're a designer or you're a leader of an organization or whatever it is that you are doing and whatever your soul's desire is it's that we have to come and to a place where we're making decisions in creating a space where we can succeed. And for you, you're very much helping people do that from the external, which will then, of course, ripple out into the internal and, and, and how that plays out emotionally, yeah. energetically, inspirationally, creatively, all of that. And um, yeah. I, I love what you were saying about um, taking uh, everything into consideration, right? It's all the different parts, all the pieces of the puzzle and then creating um, the mood and the state and also the flexibility. And I love the piece that you said about boundaries because everything that we do in life, especially if you are a leader, is about setting the right boundaries through negotiation. Yeah. Right? What, what am I allowing to happen in my space and what am I not allowing? 
And I know we were chatting a little bit about, you know, now that there are husbands and wives and children and they're all at home, especially you in Singapore, you guys have a few more weeks before your, your lockdown is the over and then it keeps going on and on. Right. And so you were talking a little bit about a lot of your women clients who are now, who are also working professionals and coming into this um, point of tension with their spouses um, and their children, because there are no boundaries, right? So what, so how has that affected the way that you're creating spaces now so that you can have these physical energetic boundaries so that everyone in the home can still feel like themselves? Um, I think it's the first thing I would say is create um, clear spaces where each of you are going to be working from. Um, and so you'll have to double up your bedroom if you don't have, if there are two of you working from home and you don't have two studies, one of you is going to have to double up um, a bedroom, put a desk. Um, it's something that a lot of people say it's a no-no, don't you know have your work uh, desk in your bedroom but you know it's all about adapting to the times and uh, making the best of the situation I've got a desk in my bedroom and I have to say I spend a lot of time in my bedroom uh, working because it's somewhere that I can go to where it's very clearly my space um, the kids have their bedrooms we have a study um, every room has a desk we're fortunate that way but in areas in homes where you may not have the spare room or you may not have enough, have enough space even if you're all huddling around the dining table um, I would say that's you know it's needs must uh, a time of necessity but when it comes to actually having a meal I'd say all laptops you've got to put them down you can have we have a box where we put all our phones all the electronics lay the table that's a good idea have that boundary of this is now a dining space right. um and also it requires you to be a little bit more organized with your clutter and your paper because you're doubling up spaces i can't go to bed at night when i have a cluttered desk so i have to ensure that before i am you know in bed my bedside table and my desk, which could have cups of uh, tea, papers, all of that's cleared away so that I become very clear about this is now my space to retreat to, to get some rest. Right. It's about, it, it is very yeah. much about boundaries, decluttering really, clearing. Sure. The yeah. Um, so we have someone asking, Venny is asking if you incorporate feng shui into the way that you design, into the way that you work. Um, now I'm not, there is a whole art and science to feng shui. Um, I'm not a feng shui master, but I know that there are certain tips um, of how to position a desk, um, how to create a feeling of positioning of um, various elements. Um, yep. I, I know the thing, the, the thing with the desk, because I grew up, my mother is very into feng shui, and she said you should yeah. never have your back facing the door in any room if you have a desk because the energy of someone coming into your room when your back is turned to them, they would backstab you. And, and if you think about it energetically, okay, that makes sense. You wanna be able to see who's coming in through the gateway, right? And so yeah. a lot of the principles of feng shui make a lot of sense, you know, adding all the five elements into your home. And I think you do this intuitively anyway because you're very connected to your, your spiritual practice. Maybe talk a little bit about that and, and how you create from that place. So, like I said, um, I strongly believe how you do one thing is how you, you do everything. So for me, my spiritual journey really is the entire foundation and the basis for my business. Um, if I don't start the day off um, in a clear space um, to center myself, to feel grounded, especially in a time like now where there's so much uncertainty in the business world, um, I really think that I would have thrown myself under a bus by now. Um, that feeling of what's next, it's constantly evolving, it's constantly thinking up of new ways to connect with your audience, and it's pretty exhausting. Um, yeah. And you know, today, for example, um, I haven't been feeling all that creative. Um, and to a designer, that is like a writer having writer's block. You can get quite panicked about oh my goodness you know I, I can't create and even if i can create all the factories and 
samples are closed, not available, I can't get any prototypes. So initially when um, COVID started, I thought that this was a natural pause that the universe had set for for everyone. And, you know, when I looked at my journey and my business, I thought I'd been working really hard and maybe this is just a natural pause. And that was okay for the first month. That was, you know, I could, I was grateful for the pause. And then the second month came along and I thought, well, you know, it's gonna be okay. And then now it's the third month and possibly the fourth month. And so that's when you have, I started to feel feelings of, oh dear, what's gonna happen now? does my business model work? Is it sustainable? And the answer is no, it isn't. Based on how I've been functioning to date to have a physical space, I retail products. Now that's obviously not considered to be an essential service, so we're closed. And we're closed pretty much indefinitely. So every day when I wake up now, I have to think of a different way to connect with my audience, to give them some level of value, um, and, but it can be quite daunting when you don't see the same sort of rate of, of return on your time and investment. And there are three things that I would say, um, that three emotions that that's brought up within me. And it is nervousness of what's next. There's a level of excitement of, with the what's next as well. So it's, it's kind of double-edged. But there's also always a feeling that I'm guided um, on this of what's going to happen next, that I don't need to control every element of it. Now, this third element is what has actually helped me stay centered throughout all the uncertainty. And this is through my daily spiritual pro uh, practice um, of meditation, breath work. Um, it's all linked. Um, having that setting the intention of what, what are I'm some of the what are some of the realizations and the benefits of you setting this daily routine of doing meditation and breath work in the morning and how does that affect you as a business owner especially now that you know everything's shifted yeah. and changed for the way that you have to do things um, it makes me feel it's a commitment I make to myself and when I make that commitment to myself I then feel supported by the universe that actually you this is where you are that's your intention to stay grounded to stay centered and whatever we throw at you you're going to be able to do it i mean you know the the cliched saying of the universe has got my back sure uh, i actually totally do believe it my car yeah. broke down uh, totally unrelated but my car broke down today and the entire way back, while I was trying to force it um, to just get me back home, we weren't that far from home, was this, I was chanting my head, the universe has got my back, I'm not gonna, it's not going to stop right in the middle of a highway. I'm gonna right. get home, I'm gonna get home. Yeah. And I think it's that um, mindset and belief that if I make sure. the commitment to myself, opportunities will open themselves up. Um, to enable me to continue doing what I do, albeit in a very different way, um, yeah. and to evolve sure. the business to what, yeah. um, what the community needs. Yeah, yeah. We were talking a little bit before about your community, your community of people that come to you, and you're not just someone who is there to sell rugs. You're someone who people come to and they confide in in, in you because. They, they, they know that there's some part of you that resonates with what they're going through. And so a lot of the people that it seems like that's showing up at your door or calling you or Zooming you are seem to be professional moms who are going through this overwhelming feeling of, ah, my goodness, what's happening with, you know, boundaries not being met feeling like they're trapped. So freedom is is in play here, you know, questioning how free we feel. And that's a very important part of feeling um, like a successful human being, having the individual freedom to express, to move, to have that space. And we don't have that space right now. And so during this quarantine period, you've been having a lot of people coming to you for even additional support. And, and it's and, and it's so beautiful when you were telling me, you know, it's it's like you are this person who helps create beautiful spaces. And yet now people are coming to you with all their inner stuff and their their inner spaces and they're like 
help, help. Um, so t tell us a little bit about that and how that's been for you. Um, I think that my perspective on the whole COVID situation is a little bit, um, I, I haven't sort of been drawn into the fear of it. There is a, definitely a level of uncertainty. So I probably come across as being um, a little bit more grounded than I don't. Re I've stopped reading the papers and all the, the uh, all the news about it. Um, Singapore situation isn't uh, improving um, particularly, and so that's why our lockdown is extended. So that level of uncertainty, I can understand why it is overwhelming to people. But for me, I think what I have always, as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, and I'm, you know, I'm in retail. It's for me, it's never ever been about just selling a product. It's about building a relationship with my clients. Um, and when you build a relationship with your clients, they trust you. And that element of trust extends to not just home decor, but having a conversation with someone that you can resonate with. And so it's been really interesting. I think initially um, when we were all stuck at home, it was all about how to, you know, how do I get more people onto our following? And actually what I realized um, quite recently that the people who are actually coming back to me and who are actually still investing in our brand and in conversations with me are returning customers. They're repeat customers or they're referrals. Um, and that's because over time I've built a level of trust and built a relationship with them. So it's something that's really, really important. I think as when you're in business, as a, as a, you know, if you want to perceive yourself as a leader in the field is that you've got to gain the trust of your following and of your community. Sure. So when people come to me, um, and they say, oh God, you know, we're all trying to create spaces where we feel where we achieve what we need, I'm actually tuning into what is it that you, they actually want. And a lot of the time, they just want a clear space in their minds and in their environments, but they just want that clear space. Why? Let's get to the why. I'm more interested in the why they want clear spaces. What is that a reflection of? Because you know, I'm into consciousness, right? <laughs> so so, so okay. it's like getting into the psychology and to the mindset, the energy of why someone wants what they want. Right. So why is such a why is clearing space such an important thing for for all these people that are coming at your door? I think um, particularly now when everyone is forced to pause, a lot of things catch up on you. They catch up with you and you whether you like it or not, it's there. If you are in a relationship that is been quite tense over a period of time with your spouse or your relationship with your children uh, or the relationship that your children have with each other, there's nowhere to escape to now. Sure. There's nowhere to run away to, there's no office to go to, there is no school to go to, you're all in there. And it's kind of, you're, you're facing it head front, um, right. head on, and you you have to look at it. You can't yeah. hide. Yeah. And so well, because in the past, people were running off to retreat centers or going to the spa. And so you're finding people are coming to you to create that that feeling at home with the intention yeah. to almost avoid or to escape what's happening at home. Is that is that something you're coming across at all? Um, I would like to think that actually what they're trying to do is to gain some clarity. And okay. you can't get clarity if you are surrounded by so much muck. Sure. Uh, ex externally, internally, and I think they they just want a bit of time where they're because they've been forced to pause to look in within, um, and they want to have that sense of clarity. And um, you know, uh, especially I get lot, just as many phone calls from fellow business owners as well saying, "What are we going to do?" Um, and everyone jumping into a panic bandwagon. Right. And what I are your top three things about uh, 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 when that comes to you? You know, when, when people come, to, it seems like a lot of people come to you with this, what am I going to do? Help me. Um, what are we going to do? Um, so what would you tell? What were the top three things that you would tell people? Don't succumb to the fear and don't look around and look at what everyone else is doing. You've got to do what feels right for you and what's right for your business. Um, it's not just about being out there making a lot of noise it's being out there giving real value 
um, because I've started, I've evolved our business quite a lot. Uh, we do a lot of virtual styling workshops now online. And anyone, well, you know, Johnson, I'm technically very challenged. So for me, that was something which was really, really out of my comfort zone, um, getting in front of the camera and connecting to my audience. Yeah. Um, and giving them giving them a little bit of insight about uh, my life, my home. All our virtual styling workshops have been held from my home, so there's nowhere to hide. Mm. Um, this has got to be the real deal. You know, you, I'm opening my doors to people. Um, I'm bringing them into my bedroom. It's, I'm a, it's showing another them. layer of vulnerability. You know, even though Easily. we're isolated. Yeah. 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 But I think that that's also been really quite key of what I say to other business owners when I'm chatting is that it's okay to feel vulnerable, it's okay to feel down about it and it's we don't have to keep propping ourselves up and pretending that hey it's all okay and having this facade on your social media that it's all wonderful when actually as soon as you turn it off you're going back to feeling miserable. And I will say that last week was my first really challenging week where I thought, oh God, I'm not feeling great and I didn't feel creative. Mm -hmm. And um, last night at about midnight, I started to feel creative and I almost hung on to that through like, I've got to do something with it because I actually feel creative now. And I stayed up till 2 a.m., a really dumb thing to do because then I felt wrecked today. Um, and you know, so now I know that actually we don't have to, if that's all operating from a space of lack of, yeah. you know, I've got to take the little that comes and make the most of it. I think we've just got to ease into this new norm. A lot of people keep saying, I can't wait to go back to, the, the, to normal. It's right. never going to go back to what it was. Sure. And I think it's evolving and accepting that we have to evolve to the, what's what is now being presented to us and how we do it yeah. um, and what you want from your new norm. Uh, I think yeah. that's really important. I mean, I've seen you, Johnson, evolve your business by doing so much uh, for the community that it's actually been really inspiring to watch. And it's part of the reason why I've started to do interviews with people as well is actually following you. So we're all inspiring each other. Sure. Um, sure. But not by trying to be the other person. I'm never going right. to be Johnson. No. I'm going to. I can only be me, and I've got to find the community that will resonate with me. Yeah. But I can learn from how um, professionally you do it, how authentic you are in connecting with your audience, and we can learn from each other without competing or without being from that lack space where you think, "Oh, they've done it. I've got to do it, but I've got to do it better." It's just evolving. Yeah, and I love that. That's really essential to move forward is, you know, you've you said a few things there for people who are in um, in an entrepreneurial leadership background. This is something I've I've come across, you know, I've met some people that do depend on manufacturing and on factories and and these types of situations and a lot of them are closed. There's issues with international borders and sending things and you know, you said you can't get you can't get uh, prototypes, right? It's just that, and so we have to find other ways and, and creative outlets. And and the first thing really is acknowledging that it's okay to say it's not okay. And that, there's a lot of shame actually that comes up around that because as someone who is a business owner, right, as a leader of your community, we almost like put ourselves up on this you know strength pedestal and we're supposed to be seen a certain way and that if we're yeah. we're seen to be taken off of that we don't want to show weakness right and this is this is really yeah. what we're being challenged with here um and and how do we reach out to ask for help from other people how do we gather you know and connect to our other fellow business uh, leaders so that we can create something not from this place of lack like you said but from a place of abundance. Yeah. Oh, wow, they're doing that. Okay, let me try try it this way in my own flavor. And not as a way to push someone yeah. else down, but to raise everyone else up. And this is really all we can do at this time and to create in new and innovative ways. And I love that that's what you're doing, these virtual, you know, who, who would have who thought, you know, you're you're helping people, you know, redesign their homes through through Zoom. Um, and that's that's a beautiful thing. Um, so thanks so much for sharing about your personal process. I think that's really helpful for, for people who are in a similar situation to you. 
um, struggling with creativity or struggling with, you know, what's next, right? Whether you have a business or not, or you're just working in an organization, there's a lot of what's next happening, you know, if you're working for a company. I think what's right? also been interesting, we uh, we're talking about, I have a lot of clients who are working women and a lot of them feel a bit stuck in the world that they're in. Um, mm. And now that it's paused and where the, I think there's a lot of relief to some extent. Mm -hmm. And then the idea of, oh, I have to wonder uh, soon, although you never know it's Singapore, in a month or maybe in two months, I'll have to go back to work. And that's really also scaring them of, I don't want to go back to that. And then some of the uh, lovely clients who've approached me have said, you know, you were a corporate lawyer once and you left and you're now doing something completely different and following your passion. Um, and you seem to be really upbeat even in a time like this. Um, and I say to them, actually, I'm not upbeat all the time. I've still got the issues that everyone's facing in their homes, but it does really help that I enjoy doing what I do. So I'm not looking, I, I'm doing it from home anyway. Um, it's not a different life. It's not a different role. It's just I've, uh, I've adapted it to my lifestyle. And I say to a lot of uh, these women who feel a bit trapped in their careers that maybe now's the time to stop and think and reassess what it is that you do want, that you had the opportunity to come off that treadmill yeah. where you're getting up in the morning, going through you know peak traffic, going to work. What is it that you actually really want? What is it that your passion really is that you might consider pursuing? Because I think we're all been given a, a gift of, of time um, to pause and reflect. And I, I you know, I, I don't think we should just look at COVID as all doom and gloom. I mean, of course, it, there's lots going out there with people being ill, and um, I, I'm not taking that away from it. But for those of us who are healthy. Um, and have the time to also reflect on what to do with that. So, you know, I've been having lots of conversations with people of, of how to get out that corporate rat race and to pursue the passion of what you really want to do. Um, I had no idea what I was going to do when I left the corporate world, um, but I knew I was very clear that it had to be something that made me happy and would be suitable with my lifestyle. And that with that clear vision and that intention it kind of evolved and I didn't even have a spiritual practice at that at that time. I just had a inner belief that I could do it if I really set my mind to it. So it was still very yeah. mindset motivated. Sure. Yes. Thank you so much, Visha. You are the queen of the inner and the outer sanctuary. <laughs> That's your new title. You're helping people reclaim their passions, you know, by by illuminating what's not working in their space. And I mean it's so it seems so, so simple working with physical space and how that reflects inner space. And I, and it's, um, yeah, I appreciate everything that you do and for helping your community of working women um, who are finding it difficult at this time and being the role model for them. And thank you so much for, for telling us all about your creative process and, and for sharing so that, you know, others can, can use you as a, as a beacon and to the, uh, through the other side. That's very kind of you to say so. I, I never quite see myself in that light, but it's um, it's kind of you to say so. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Fisher, and um, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, Johnson.